Okay, so in this lecture, we are going to go back and talk about some basic physics, about observables and Schrodinger's equation. So what's an observable? Well, an observable is a quantity that you can measure. It's a quantity like energy or position or momentum. So think about it like this. It's anything where you have some sort of measuring device with a needle that gets, def gets deflected and you make a readout. So, so you have your quantum state, psi, and then you measure it. You, you see some real number as output, which is the energy of the system or the position, something like that. OK, so what's an observable mathematically? Well, let's say we have a k-level system. So psi is an element of a k-dimensional Hilbert space, complex vector space. So the, an observable A for the system is a k by k Hermitian matrix. So it's an operator, it's a matrix A such that A equal to A conjugate transpose. So what do I mean by that? Well, here, here's an example of, a, of an observable. Okay, so when you take the conjugate transpose, when you take the transpose, you'd get, um, well, the same thing on the diagonal, but 1 plus i and 1 minus i would switch big places. But now, when you take the conjugate, you'd get back the same matrix that you started from. Okay, so that's what, that's what an observable is. Now, you might be thinking, but we learned that a measurement is given by an orthonormal basis. Right, so so we, we we said that you know we learned so far that when you are measuring a state psi, what you do is you you choose a basis in which to measure it. You know your your basis is phi one, phi two, phi sub k, and and what the measurement gives you is it gives you outcome j with probability you know alpha j magnitude squared if that's the amplitude of it in this basis and then the new state is phi sub j so how do we reconcile these pictures? So what, what do we mean by saying that an observable is a Hermitian matrix? OK, so let's see. Well, what's special about Hermitian matrices? Well, the spectral theorem. So the spectral theorem says that if A is Hermitian, then it must have an orthonormal set of eigenvectors, phi 1 through phi k, with real eigenvalues lambda 1 through lambda k. What do we mean by this? Well, what we mean is when we say phi i is an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda i is that a times phi i is just lambda i times phi i. Okay, so, so now our two pictures are really the same picture because a Hermitian matrix is just a fancy mathematical way of specifying an orthonormal basis, right? It's the basis of eigenvectors of this observable A. And so how do you actually, how does a measurement take place with respect to this observable? Well, so it's exactly what we said before. So we are, we are measuring in this basis of eigenvectors, phi 1 through phi k. And now what we are saying is write the state to be measured psi as a linear combination of these eigenvectors. So write it as alpha 1 phi 1 plus alpha k phi k. And then the measurement result is this. So with probability alpha j magnitude squared, the outcome of the measurement is lambda sub j, and the new state is phi sub j. Okay, so 
This is the real number that you actually get to read out when you make the measurement. This is how much the needle deflects on your measuring instrument. The state gets projected onto one of these eigenvectors, phi sub j. Which one? Well, each one with probability square of the amplitude. So we are back to the picture that we had before, except now we have a fancy way of specifying the orthonormal basis in which we do the measurement. OK, so let's do an example. So let's say that our state was alpha 0 plus beta 1. It's a, it's a state of a single qubit. And let's say we use a particularly simple observable. It's, it's just x, which is 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, don't get confused. x happens also to be a unitary uh, a transformation. It's, it's an elementary gate, but it, it also happens to be a Hermitian matrix. OK, so, so now let's say we were doing the measurement. You know, we were, we were measuring according to this observable. So how do we do the measurement? Well, the first question we must ask is, what are the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of x? OK, so in fact, x has a very nice set of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So the eigenvectors are, are plus and minus. And the corresponding eigenvalues are plus 1 and minus 1. OK, so let's verify this. So what's x times plus? So what's plus is 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. And what do you get back? Well, you get back exactly what you started with. So eigenvalue is 1. What's x times minus? So this time you get back minus 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. But what is this? This is exactly minus of 1 over square root 2, minus 1 over square root 2. So the eigenvalue is minus 1. OK, so now how do we do the actual measurement? Well, we want to write psi in the plus minus basis. So we've gone through this before. Psi is alpha 0 plus beta 1. But we can write it in the plus minus basis. And if you work it out, it's alpha plus beta over square root 2 plus plus alpha minus beta over square root 2 minus. Make sure you actually know how to work this through. And so what's the outcome of the measurement? Well, the outcome of the measurement is going to be 1 with probability alpha plus beta over square root 2 magnitude squared. And it'll be minus 1 with probability alpha minus beta over square root 2 magnitude squared. What's the new state? In this case, the new state equal to plus. In this case, the new state equal to minus. We can also ask, what's the expected value of the measurement? So we get plus 1 with some probability, minus 1 with some probability. You know, if this was, say, some, some quantity like the momentum of the system, we want to know what's the average momentum, what's the expected value of the momentum. And it's, it's just 1 times alpha plus beta over square root 2 magnitude squared plus minus 1 times alpha minus beta over square root 2 magnitude squared. OK, so now there's one more thing that we should really talk about, which is what happens if there are repeated eigenvalues? So let's say we had a three-dimensional system. Uh, we had an observable for it. And the eigenvalues are lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to 1, and lambda 3 equal to 2. And this is an orthonormal set of eigenvectors, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3. So the first thing to observe is that if you look at any phi, which is a linear combination of phi 1 and phi 2, it's also an eigenvector with eigenvalue plus 1. So let's say, suppose that phi was equal to alpha phi 1 
plus beta phi 2. And let's say we apply the operator A, you know, which the Hermitian operator A. So what's A times phi? Well, it's alpha A phi 1 plus beta A phi 2. But, but phi 1 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. Phi 2 is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. So you get alpha times this eigenvalue 1 times phi 1 plus beta times 1 times phi 2. The point is it's the same eigenvalue in both cases, so you can pull it out. In this case, it's just 1, so it disappears, and so you get alpha times plus beta. Sorry, you get alpha times phi 1 plus beta times phi 2. So, which is phi. Right, so in general, you would pull out the eigenvalue and you'd get lambda times phi, where lambda is the eigenvalue. So any vector in this, in this subspace is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. So now, the rules for measurement, when you're measuring according to, you know, in the spaces, is, is the following. What you do is, what you actually see as outcome is, well, you get projected onto, onto phi 3 with probability square of this length, and then you get projected into this subspace. So let's say you're, you're being projected onto phi, actually, if you, if you project orthogonally into this subspace. Well, then you get projected onto phi with probability square of this length. And that's the outcome of the measurement. So with probability square of this length, you see the outcome one, and then the new state is actually the projection of this onto this two-dimensional subspace, which I'm assuming in this case happens to be this vector phi, which is as good an eigenvector as phi 1 and phi 2. So now if you understood that, here's a very nice question to think about. It's very simple, but, but it, it'll test whether you understood what happens. So let's say that we, we measure the quantum system with respect to the operator observable i. So i meaning the identity which is just 1, 1, 1 down the diagonals, 0 everywhere else. So what's the outcome and what's the new state? 